Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today, I'm going to be sharing an updated SF Masterworks spreadsheet. I'm also going to interview Dave Post. He created a website called worldswithoutend.com. It is a wonderful resource of lists. There are awards, there's topical lists, and there's some reading challenges. So let's get started. In my second video for the SF Masterworks, I shared with you a spreadsheet. Today, I want to update that spreadsheet and also give it to you in Excel form as well. Let's take a look. So this is my SF Masterworks Golanx spreadsheet. I have one column that is a numbered column, and we have a listing of 198 books, including two books that are coming out soon. We have it alphabetical by author and then title. I decided I'd like to do the titles in chronological order. So I took a look at the copyrights and listed the titles based on that. I identify whether it's short stories or omnibus. The yellow spined ones are from 2010 to the present. I know they have laminated boards, but I listed it as hardcover. That seems to be the nomenclature that most people know. And then in 2022, Golanx introduced the best of SF Masterworks. They have yellow covers, except if they are a hardcover. Once again, it's a laminated board cover. There's only two hardcovers. There's Douglas Adams, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And... Frank Herbert's Dune. The rest of the reissues I have here in a gradient between yellow to red. The first series of SF Masterworks came out with black spines and those series were numbered. They came out in 1999 to 2007. So in this column here, you'll see which books came out in the black spine and what their number was. Once again, you'll see a hardcover. Those hardcovers, once again, are laminated boards. That brings us to 2001. There were true hardcovers with jackets issued. There was 10 of them. They are indicated by Roman numerals. I'm going to make this spreadsheet available both in a PDF and an Excel file. Look to the description of this video for links. I will also create a pinned comment with links. When I first shared this spreadsheet in the second video for the SF Masterworks, I got an email from Dave Post. He's an administrator for worldswithoutend.com. I had never been to this site. It's an amazing visual tool to keep track of the books that you've read. You can check them against lists and awards. But let's let Dave explain this to you. Today I'm joined by Dave Post of Worlds Without End. Welcome, Dave. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> Great. Well, I'd like to hear a little bit about how this website came to be and maybe a little bit about what the website is. Uh, OK. The uh, website started a long time ago uh, as a little project that I did for uh, for some friends uh, of mine. We were all interested in reading all of the uh, Hugo Award winning books. But at that time, there wasn't any internet or the internet had just started and we could find the basic information about the Hugo Award list of uh, books and everything. But it was never uh, it was never anything that I particularly liked. I'm a very visual person and I wanted something with uh, the book covers and everything else, because that that kind of excites me a little bit more than, uh, you know, just a text list. And so I got into uh, uh, HTML and started working on it uh, just as a fun little project. So I put together the list, made it available for all my friends to uh, access. And then uh, next thing I know, somebody said, hey, what about the Nebula? And I was like, OK, that's a thing. So uh, so I expanded it to add the Nebula and then uh, someone said, what about the Campbell? And then uh, it just kind of grew from there. Uh, and it lasted for years just as something that we just use privately, you know, just passing around and stuff. And it got to a point where we decided, you know, that people might be interested in this information. So we uh, 
uh, bought the URL for Worlds Without End and uh, launched it up on the internet. And we've been uh, adding features and expanding uh, capabilities and stuff like that ever since. Dave got a hold of me after I did a the episode about Masterworks and created a spreadsheet. And he said, hey, we've got a great spreadsheet and we've got a spreadsheet here with the, the thumbnails of the, the books there. And so I went to his website and uh, you can find so many different lists there. There's a membership portion to your, your website as well. You want to talk a little bit mm -hmm. about what that is? Yeah, sure. So um, what we discovered as we started uh, expanding the content on the, on the site is everybody had their own favorite uh, award. Uh, and then, of course, lists started showing up, you know, uh, classics of science fiction, Masterworks lists, that sort of thing. Uh, Masterworks appeared uh, really early on um, because of cover art. Everybody loves cover art. Everybody wanted to, you know, collect the entire set. I see you've got them in the, in the background there. They look great on the shelf, that sort of thing. Very, very uh, nerd centric. You know, to have something like that, that's a complete set, collect them all, all that sort of thing. And uh, it also is kind of an indication that some people don't particularly care for the Hugo. You know, uh, maybe they don't like the uh, uh, the voting process. Maybe they think, uh, oh, it's uh, too much skewed towards celebrity. And that's why I like the Campbell Award, because it's voted on by or it's uh, organized by professionals or whatever. So we started just creating all these different lists. And then it kind of occurred to us. What about the books that appear on multiple lists? And that kind of became the impetus for the site to help people find good books to read. So you don't like the way the Hugo is administrated. Okay, that's fine. You got your reasons. Um, but a book that appears on the Hugo and the Nebula and the you know British Science Fiction Association Award or whatever, multiple places, maybe that's a good indication that you should go ahead and read that book. And so we just started combining all those things and making it possible for you to find the books that are on multiple awards. And then, of course, the list came in, and now you can find books that are on multiple award nominations and on multiple best of lists administered by different organizations throughout uh, the internet and stuff like that. So you look for the books with the high numbers in each category, uh, you probably got a pretty good chance at a, at a decent read. And it's got both science fiction, fantasy, and horror in there, I see. That's right. That's right. It uh, became too hard to separate horror from dark fantasy and grim dark and all the different versions of uh, fantasy that are out there so we're just like all right we'll just add it in there you know there was a bit of a call for it so uh when people started asking for it we uh you know found our way to the shirley jackson award and um the stoker award mm -hmm. and so we basically what we do is we identify holes in our coverage and then we try to fill them we try to find something that's that's legitimate that people will listen to or pay attention to if uh, if some guy named Dave makes a list, it doesn't really mean anything unless I've got some sort of gravitas or some sort of uh, standing in the community that people will uh, pay attention to. So what we do is we look for uh, that kind of authoritative voice uh, to generate lists and stuff like that for us. So, um, you know, we had something like um, Crash Course in the uh, uh, history of uh, uh, African-American science fiction. Obviously, I'm not a guy who can create that list. Uh, nobody would pay any attention to that list if I created it. So, you know, we went for, went for the source and uh, got their permission to put the list on the site. And, uh, you know, so that's how we fill in the gaps and stuff like that. But uh, one of the best things about the site is uh, it's free to sign up. Uh, you can create an account. And when you do create an account, you can tag all the books that you've read. And that way, when you go to look at, if your intention is to read all the Hugos or let, let's say uh, the SF Masterworks, it will color code the background of every book in the view uh, to indicate your relationship to that book. So if it's on your reading list, it'll be yellow. If it's one that you've already read, it turns green. If it's a favorite, it turns blue, that sort of thing. And then the intention is you can look through there for the uncolored backgrounds and then you see where the holes are, the ones you've missed, you haven't read yet, and then you can fill it in. And uh, you have a tracking ability. You can look at all your lists, all your awards, and you can see which ones that you're short of and that sort of thing. And the other thing, um, you can find that one book that's been nominated for, you know, or won several awards and been on a bunch of lists. And you can read that one. and It'll check off across all those different awards and lists that you've already read that book. It's a substitute for those uh, spreadsheets that we all keep to keep track of the books that we bought, that we own, you know, that we need to get that sort of thing. It's just kind of built into the site so that you can access it from the internet when you go to the bookstore. You can look at your list and see 
oh, there's that book I haven't read yet. Uh, that's part of the masterworks and I'll go ahead and grab it. So it's a fabulous functionality on it. I've, I've uh, been amazed at what you've done on this site here. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate and, it. Uh, I can see as a member, I joined actually last night that you have quite an active forum too. You want to talk about the forums? It's something that we've been trying to encourage people to use, but there just doesn't seem to be a whole lot of uptake for it. Um, it's one of those things. It's a, it's a bit of an old, uh, um, it's an older method and you have to kind of go in there and search for the conversations. The conversations don't come to you. Um, but we're working on a new version of that, that we're going to, uh, install with the updated version of the entire site that's coming sometime this year, I'll say. Fingers Why don't crossed. you tell us a little bit more about that update that you're planning or what okay, so, you would like to share? Yeah, I'd love to share. Uh, so one of the things about uh, the whole kind of impetus of Worlds Without End is helping people find books when they don't have any other resource to find books. Like um, it used to be when I was young, there was always a specialty bookstore like pretty much in every major town. You could go in, you could have a conversation about science fiction, you could talk to the owner, you could talk to other people in the store, you could get recommendations and you have a, a whole shopping experience right there. Uh, most of those bookstores have gone away. If you have one in your local town, count yourself lucky because there are none in Dallas, Texas. And uh, it's really unfortunate. So, uh, so what we're trying to do is replicate kind of the shopping experience uh, uh, that you have in a bookstore online. And that's why we have like the cover art and stuff like that. It's a big part of it. Uh, you know, you have the, you can flip it over. You can read the synopsis on the back. You can read an excerpt from the book. You can read reviews, all that sort of thing that you can do in a bookstore. If you're holding the physical copy, uh, we try to have that information available to you online. Um, if you imagine, uh, when you go shopping for a book on Amazon, you usually know what you're going for. You have a book in mind before you go there. There's not really a much of a, a shopping experience, a browsing experience to be had there uh, without a lot of effort. And so we try to create a, a way for you to browse. So we consider all those awards, all those lists, all those different ways that we break down the content of the site uh, as bookshelves. So you find the bookshelf that you're interested in and you peruse the books that, that are there. So if you like the Hugo, then you go to the Hugo bookshelf and check out everything that's there. If you're more interested in uh, I don't know, uh, African science fiction. We have the new NAMO award that started just a few years ago. So again, that's a, one of those gaps that we tried to fill. And so here's a, a whole list of, uh, you know, contemporary African science fiction for you to pick from. If that's something that you're interested in and you want to try out, but you know, what better place to go than the awards for mm -hmm. that category. So it gives you a little bit of a um, sort of bit of a safety net. You know, somebody thought enough of these books to put them on the lists or to uh, to give them awards or award nominations, uh, so you know we count that as uh, professional recommendations, and and that's what the the site is about helping you find those those great books, and then um, but one of the downsides to the site is we're trying to create a bit of a community where you can reach out and talk to people about uh, books from all over the world, and and it works. But everybody has to work really hard at it at the current point. So the new site, uh, which we're calling uh, WWN 3.0, is um, has a lot more uh, social features that are going to come with it and uh, should in improve the usability of the site uh, a hundredfold. I see that you have reading challenges on your site. Can you tell me about those? Okay, so uh, yeah, we came with this idea of putting up a reading challenge. There were lots of reading challenges that we saw online, and we thought we'd get in on the game. And so we created a reading challenge based on the Damon Knight Memorial Grandmaster Award. And the challenge was uh, to read uh, 12 authors uh, that have won the Grandmaster, uh, Damon Knight Grandmaster Award. And uh, it went over really well. We had a lot of participants. Uh, people got really into it. Uh, we created a, a tracker page that you could you could put your books up on the list and then uh, you could check them off as finished, as completed as you went. And everybody could read whatever books they wanted, as long as they were by the authors that had won the Grandmaster Award. Uh, and it was a lot of fun, and everybody uh, had a great time. And then the next year, they said, okay, well, what's the reading challenge this year? And we were like, oh, um, okay, you don't want to do the same theme again. They're like, no, we want to do something different. Uh, one of the gaps that we wanted to fill in was um, uh, helping people find books by women authors. There, there's a... 
there's a there's a weird thing that happens with uh, with readers when they start reading at a young age, where as a boy I would read only male authors because I was a boy. Gender roles are super important when you're when you're young like that, and that uh, notion of only reading male authors lasted well into my adulthood until someone pointed out, man, you only read men. Why don't you read any women? And I would say, oh, I've read plenty of women. And then I would list off, you know, Ursula Le Guin, and, you know, a handful of uh, super famous uh, uh, women authors. And it would be like five authors out of a hundred. So we decided we wanted to take on uh, a challenge of introducing people and encouraging people to read more women authors and not just the top authors, you know, not just Nancy Cress and Ursula Le Guin and that kind of stuff, but to read new and upcoming authors and stuff like that. And just kind of uh, uh, spread that information around because it, you, you, those habits that you form as a kid, they, they last forever until you realize that you have a habit. And for me, the realization came really to my attention when we put this list together and put it up on the site. So you can go to a list of, of all the women authors on the site and it's broken down after you've input your data and tagged all your books and everything. And it'll break it into two sections, all the women authors I have read and all the women authors I haven't read. And when I put that feature in and I hit go, my list was like six women authors that I've read and 2,700 women authors that I have not read. And it was an eye opener in the extreme because it was graphic. It was right in my face. There was no denying. I just haven't read women authors. And it wasn't uh, I hate women or anything like that. It was just a habit that I had formed as a kid. But anyway, so uh, long story short, it brought to my attention the fact that that, that people haven't read as much uh, by women as they probably think they have, you know, because everybody can list off a handful. But when you get past that handful, you know, how much further can you go? And so uh, so we created the uh, Women of Genre Fiction Reading Challenge. And the challenge was to read 12 women authors that are completely new to you. And so you can't reread something you already read. You can't go back to, you know, um, uh, Ursula Le Guin again. She's off your list. You got to read someone else. And then uh, anyway, so that became the new challenge. And everybody loved it. And there was huge participation. I mean, they liked the theme and they liked the uh, the idea of spreading the love around to some some authors that haven't gotten a bunch of attention, that sort of thing. And uh, it went over like gangbusters. We had even more people sign up and participate in that challenge. And then the next year came. And then everybody said, what's the reading challenge theme going to be? And we're like, oh, come on. Like, can we, <laughs> you can't do the women are reading, you know, the, the women is genre fiction again. And they were like, no, we want something different. This is really hard to find a theme that everyone's going to love when you have one theme. And so at some point in the night, we threw our hands up and I just said, all right, how about we just let people create their own themes? Hmm. And then it was just like a light bulb moment. And we were all like, wait a minute, how would that work? And we just uh, hammered it out right there, uh, you know, over beers, just talking about it. So the idea is uh, any member can create a reading challenge. They can make that reading challenge for themselves only. So you can make it private. Nobody else has to see it. So if your reading challenge for yourself is I'm going to read 100 books this year, you can create your own challenge. It creates a page. It puts a little checkbox on the uh, the novel page on the site. So there's a there's a page for every book in the database. And you go down the list, you, put, you check that book, and it will put it on your personal list. But it puts it on your list in a faded uh, cover. And once you tag it as red, it becomes full color. And so you can see everything that you're adding to your list. You can leave blanks. You can fill it in as you go. You can fill it in all up front. And then you can see which ones that you've read and, and track your own uh, progress through your own private challenge. Then you can create another challenge. It's just a public challenge. So anybody can join up and uh, do the same challenge. So people started getting really creative and building all these different themes. So this year is, uh, I think, our 15th year for the reading challenge. And we have 36 different themes. And people will sign up for dozens of these themes. They see a theme they like, they're going to sign up. I did a sort of a challenge just for myself, where for this channel, I read all the Ace Science Fiction Special Series 1. Those are from mm. about 1967 to 1971. Yeah. Uh, 38 books. And so that sounds nice. like something I might even want to try to set up on your website, seeing how that could go. 
Yeah, yeah. There's um or is there one already of, there? Yeah, we, we slice and dice the data in uh, hundreds of different ways. And we're always looking for, for new and interesting uh, things to do. So so we have awards, uh, but awards don't cover everything. Um, and the interesting thing about awards is um, there are fewer awards the farther back in time you go. Right? You start off with uh, the Hugo was the first one, 1953, but that was kind of it. And then, you know, Nebula came along a few years later and, and it builds up. So if you were uh, active back in the day, you had a shot at one, maybe two awards. And we're talking Grandmasters, you know, Einlein. He only had a shot at one, one or two awards. Well, nowadays, I mean, I think we covered like 30 something awards on the site. There's lots of awards that you can win. So you look at somebody like uh, China Mihaville. And of course, when he puts out a book, he wins like seven awards for it. You know, so China Mieville, and on the site, we have these little numbers that are on the covers you may have seen. So if you have a book cover and it has a little red number, that's the that's an indication for a number of award nominations that the book has received. And then underneath that is the number of best of list inclusions that that, that book has, has been on. So the the interesting part is uh, the the old older science fiction has uh, fewer awards, but is on more best of lists. These are books that have stood the test of time and people keep recommending them all the time and passing them down and stuff like that. So you get something like Dune, which is on like almost every best of list or um, uh, Lord of the Rings or something like that. If you're talking about fantasy, that sort of thing. So those older books have a really high uh, number in black indicating the lists. The newer books tend to have uh, you know, the, the, the ones that get all the attention and get the awards, they have a higher number in the red, but very few uh, uh, black ones uh, because they're not on best of lists. They just came out. Yeah, mm -hmm. We have to wait and see if they're going to be on a list somewhere in the future. So there's a there's a correlation between the old stuff and the new stuff that, that goes up and down. And if you can find something that's in that sweet spot where you've got like a four and a four, then you know it's not too far old because it got nominated for multiple awards and it's not uh, uh, it's not super, super new because it's been around long enough to start appearing on award lists. So that's kind of like the sweet spot that you can look for to find a good book. Uh, we want to share everything. We're not, we're not stingy about trying to hold you on our page. We're going to link out to everything and anything that we can find uh, to help people. And I really do appreciate that too, because uh, it's about building uh, resource and community. And I think mm -hmm. that uh, you and I actually are kind of on the same page and trying to do that with what we're doing. So uh, it's, yeah, definitely. Once I said, once again, I say uh, it's, it's wonderful, wonderful what you have here. I think is a great resource. I'm actually surprised I hadn't found it until now. And so I just want to make <laughs> sure that people hear about it. Thank you so much for coming on and chatting about it. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate you having me. My thanks to Dave Post for sharing today with us about worldswithoutend.com. Dave may be back in the future to talk about Worlds Without End version 3, which is coming up soon. So until next time, keep track of your collection and keep reading.